After a decade in Sweden. Now, the next award, Nobel Prize in the field of physiology and medicine, 1962, goes to, shared by three eminent scientists, James Watson, Francis Crick, and Maurice Wilkins, for determination of the structure of DNA. was very unhappy in Paris because she was not able to continue work owing to her deteriorating health condition. Around this time, she was offered a position to join the biophysics lab headed by J.T. Randall at King's College London to work on crystallographic structures of protein. of DNA. He was on a holiday when Rosalind joined the lab.
I would hate to buy it, but I want to work for protein, uh, protein structure uh, estimation. I must say, it's a lot of the work. And, and now I want you to dive into some novel topic. I think you've heard about the term D and A. Yes, that's the topic I think uh, most of the scientists and researchers are working now. Well, I like your enthusiasm and I would love if you unravel the history of DNA. Definitely, I think that seems to be very fascinating and interesting and I'm happy to be part of this proposal. So when do we have to start with that? Very soon, ma'am, very soon. So, uh, Margie, please show ma'am around this lab and both of you make yourself uh, self Sure. Thank you, thank you, Professor Nandar. I'll so see you later. Meet you again. Thank you. Hello, Professor Wilson. Hello, I'm Watson. 
<coughs> Watson and Craig feel humiliated by Franklin's speculations on their model, and to make matters worse, even their supervisor Brad forbids them to further work on the project. But it was not over for them yet. They did not want to give up. They were very determined, not even deterred by the humiliation and debarment. They knew that once Pauling gets to know about Franklin's data, he could quickly come up with the correct structure. So the race began in earnest, and Watson and Craig had to act fast. Watson goes to King's College to meet Franklin to convince her to collaborate with them. <coughs> Thank you. 